Hey everybody, Mickey here. Welcome back to the Final Fantasy X walkthrough. We are here at the very ominous and very hated Bavel Cloister of Trials. But, I don't know, I don't really dislike this one that much. It's a little bit confusing. Well, I should, I should refrain that. I know what I'm doing. I've done this Cloister of Trials probably five, six, seven different times, so. I know how to do it, but I remember the first time that I did it, I was not happy with it. It's very... I don't even want to say confusing, it's just... It's very maze-like. I think I already screwed up. I thought that, that was going to allow me to, uh... To go down... Automatically. But, anyways, I'm gonna label it out like this. I'm gonna try to make it simple. You're on this little device, this, uh... Moving platform, and we want to go down. So you want to press X when the arrow is the way that you want to go. Now there are three tiers, three levels to this Cloister of Trials. And that's what makes it kind of confusing is that you don't want to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But when you hit the end of one tier, like I did at the very beginning when I got onto this platform, once you hit the very end, you'll actually just go all the way back to the beginning of that tier, that first level. Or, not just the first level, but back to the beginning of the area that you're in, the tier that you're in. A little bit difficult for me to describe it all. So, we want to go down to the third tier, like I've done here, all the way to the very bottom. And then, we head back up. When you're on the third tier here, it's going to go ahead and automatically take you to the second tier. We're on level two right now, so we're just going to go up, back to the first level, the first tier. And on this first floor here, we're going to take the first right that we can, but you got to time it. So here, I'm going to put my controller close, right there. Oh, well, it went to the left. Um, yeah, this gets a little bit finicky and difficult. I don't know really how, like, people like speedrunners do it, but I actually wanted to, uh, get over to the other platform. I wish I kind of figured out a little bit more tricks as to how to get onto the specific platform that you want to the first try, because I find that oftentimes when I press the X button, so I want to go on the left side here, right, left, right, that... Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear the button clicks, but I only press it once and I hold it because you get kind of uh, particular on the timing. So let's take one sphere out that we got from the bottom and we put it in this recess here. And that's what goes ahead and powers this platform on the second level, the second tier. So now let's go ahead and push the pedestal back on, and I want to go to the other side, uh, right, right across the way from us, but it doesn't allow us to. So instead, we've got to go back here. Let's go hit the down button, or the down arrow, I should say, and let's go to the right platform now to get the right there. Get the other Bevel Sphere that we couldn't last time. Well, we could have, but I just didn't want to because of the fact that well, I wanted to have my hands free so I could use the other Be Bevel Sphere to put it in the recess that made the platform to begin with. Jeez, this cloister, I swear to God, it's already, it's already getting to me. <laughs> no, it's really not that bad. You just kind of need to know what to do. But God, if you didn't know what to do, yeah, this is going to be a pain in the ass because, well, you just don't even have free movement. Let's go... Ugh, oh, missed it. <laughs> this is what I hate about this one. And this isn't even the fast level, like on, on the second floor. That's when the platform starts moving so fast, it's like hard to gauge. All right, here we go. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, third time, third time here, let's go. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was too far off. But now, since this second level's opened up, well, we want to go ahead and, well, explore it. So let's go to the left here. And the first platform I want to want to get on, there's these three glyphs. One, two, three. I want to use the third glyph right there. 
and go ahead and take the Bevel Sphere that's in my hand and push it, push it, place it into the recess here. It goes ahead and creates this platform where we're not going to be doing anything quite yet with it. Let's go ahead and push the pedestal back on. The pedestal is essentially our platform that helps us move around this thing. And again, like I said, it'll take us back to the very beginning of the second floor here. So let's go ahead and go on. And now I want to go to the second glyph. So not this one, that's one, this one. Oh my god. I don't even know how I was supposed to get that one to go right. Yeah, at the second floor here, the platform starts moving way, way, way faster. All right, a little bit of concentration, boom. All right, wonderful. Yeah, I, I again, I really wonder how speedrunners take this on because I can imagine that missing one of the glyph arrows like I've been doing, it can be very time consuming so who knows there's a glyph sphere here that we're going to use because unlike the other cloister of trials well i believe that you are uh, maybe someone correct can correct me this in the comments but i believe that you're not actually able to complete this Cloister of Trials without doing the Destruction Sphere puzzle as well. So we take this Glyph Sphere and we can go ahead and place it in this recess. And in doing so, it actually creates, well, I guess it takes that ba back, that boundary or that barrier off so that you can get this Destruction Sphere. So now that we have the Destruction Sphere, ooh, I don't think I did that correct. Well, we'll go ahead and handle it as is. I think that I should have grabbed the Bevel Sphere and put it into the pedestal first. But, no worries, we'll handle it. Nope! God damn it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, movement along these things are definitely... Annoying. I think I want to go to this first glyph. I might be wrong. It should be the second one now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's going to be the second one. We're not going to mess around with this one quite yet, so. Alright. Not yet, at least. Yeah, sometimes I still mess up a little bit, but for the most part, I know where I'm going. We need to get into this hallway right here. Yeah, it seems like it goes a lot slower, like there's less momentum when you make a stop and then you go, you get on the platform again. Alright, so we're gonna take this destruction sphere, we place it here. You gonna do anything? Oh, does something. Am I right in thinking that's what it's supposed to do? God, I'm really hoping so. <laughs> We're gonna find out, <laughs> that's for sure. I have a feeling that I might have done this wrong. <laughs> We're gonna figure out. Anyway, let's go to the third section here and pick up the bell sphere that I missed earlier. I'm really having doubts on doing what I just did there. Really hoping that everything goes well. So I'd like to get this on the first recording, but who knows, man? Who knows? This could be confusing at times. So, the only other place that we haven't gone yet is the first section, so that's where we're headed to, but we need to head over that first section with multiple Bevel Spheres. I thought I was a little bit too far, but I think I just made it. 
So the confusing part about heading into this section is that you can go ahead and actually, there's like nowhere to walk, but you can push the pedestal past to move forward. So now that we have the other Bavel Sphere in our hand, I guess, <laughs> we're just going to move up here. I'm pretty positive. See, this is where I'm getting confused. Is this where I need to have the destruction sphere? This is what's throwing me off. Oh, yeah. This is where I need the destruction sphere to put it in there, huh? Is that right? Is that right? Okay, it, I guess it is, yeah. Alright, <laughs> well... <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I wasn't sure if the Destruction Sphere needed to be placed in that, that place. It's, it's weird, like, the Destruction Sphere doesn't blow anything up like it does in other Cloister of Trials, so it gets really confusing as to what that Destruction Sphere did at this Cloister. Anyway, you get a few nice little perks. You get the Night Lance, which will show off as soon as I can open a menu. And we get an HP Sphere. The HP Sphere you can always get, but the Night Lance is an equip piece of equipment here for Kimari, which is going to help out specifically in the way that I've built him with 18% strength. So, very good stuff. I'm glad I could get a first try, even though it was a little bit dodgy there. Yuna? Inside, maybe? Then what are we standing here for? Hey! You can stuff your taboos! What's that? A faith. They join with the Summoner, and together receive the Aeon. They are human souls, imprisoned in stone by ancient Yevon rites. The dead should be allowed to rest. like we're at the end of the line here, but we do get our summon, or Aeon, which is extremely powerful, the Bahamut. we putting him to good use later on. The High Court of Yevon is now in session. The sacred offices of this court seek nothing but absolute truth in Yevon's name. To those on trial, believe in Yevon, and speak only the truth. Maester Kelk Ronso. 
Summoner Yuna. You have sworn to protect the people of Yevon, true? Yes. Then consider. You have inflicted dire injury upon Maester Seymour Guado. Conspired with the Albed and joined in their insurrection. These are traitorous and unforgivable crimes that disturb the order of Yevon. Tell this court what possessed you to participate in such violence. Your Grace. The real traitor is Maester Seymour. He killed his father Jisco with his own hands. What is this? Hmm? Haven't you heard? Not only that, Maester Seymour is already dead. It is a summoner's sacred duty to send the souls of the departed to the far plane. Yuna was only doing her job as a summoner. Grand Maester Micah, please send Seymour now. Send the unsent to where they belong? Yes. <laughs> Maester? Send the dead, hmm? You would have to send me, too. What? Grand Maester Micah is a wise leader. Even in death, he is invaluable to Spira. <laughs> Enlightened rule by the dead is preferable to the misguided failures of the living. Life is but a passing dream, but the death that follows is eternal. Men die, beasts die, trees die, even continents perish. Only the power of death truly commands in spirit. Resisting its power is futile. But what a sin! I am a summoner, my lord, like my father before me. I am on a pilgrimage to stop the death that sin brings. Are you... Are you telling me that too is futile? <sighs> Grand Maester Micah, I am not alone. All the people who have opposed sin, their battles, their sacrifices, were they all in vain? <laughs> Not in vain. No matter how many summoners give their lives, sin cannot be truly defeated. Their rebirth cannot be stopped. Yet the courage of those who fight gives the people hope. There is nothing futile in the life and death of a summoner. Never futile. But never ending. Mm. Indeed, that is the essence of the heaven. Lord Micah! The heaven is embodied by eternal, unchanging continuity, Summoner. No! <laughs> that can't be right! Those who question these truths, they are traitors. Lord Micah! Yuna's okay. 
Hmm. She's strong. She'll make it. She'll make it? What, so she can die? <sighs> Why is it... Everything in Spira seems to revolve around people dying? Ah, the spiral of death. Huh? Summoners challenge the bringer of death, sin, and die doing so. Guardians give their lives to protect their summoner. The faith are the souls of the dead. Even the maesters of Yevon are unsent. Spira is full of death. Only sin is reborn, and then only to bring more death. It is a cycle of death, spiraling endlessly. <sighs> Come out. Your sentence has been decided. Sentence? Don't you mean execution? <laughs> really, now? What person would execute a dear friend? You would. Looks like you're next. Next for what? Get going. Where's everybody else? Floating down there somewhere, maybe? What's our sentence? Think they expect us to give up and die down here? Oh, well that's a lame way to kill someone. Where's Uni? I don't know. Wonder if we should wait for her. Hmm. Let's wait at the exit. If there is an exit. How fares the Ronso Maester? It seems my father's murder troubles him. <laughs> Ever the Ronso. Hard headed, hardly useful. However, the summoner Yuna, daughter to High Summoner Braska. She may be of some use to us alive. She has disturbed the order of the oven. She cannot be allowed to live. I understand. Let it go, Seymour. No one thrown into the Via Purifico has ever survived. Yet there is always a small chance that they might. Place guards at the exit. Kill any who emerge. Sir, leave that to me. Oh, first your father, now your bride. Allow me to do this because she is my bride. Wait, I will go too. You do not trust me? Would you trust a man who murdered his father? Very well, as you wish. Lady Yuna, forgive me. Well, yeah, there's a ton there, right? I think it's an extremely weak way to... ...execute an execution? But anyways, but uh, we're here at the Via Perifico with... ...specifically handling Yuna. Which we'll go ahead and 
complete next time.